Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'll be showing you how to motion track your footage in After Effects. So to get started we're going to open up After Effects and here you can see the effect we're going to be creating today. If I hit spacebar you can see that I have tracked an extra M onto this building so that it looks like it's an actual part of the building. And even as it zooms in you can see that it still looks like it's supposed to be in that spot. So that's the effect we're going to be creating. So in order to get started, we're going to go up to Composition, New Composition. And I'm just going to make it 1280 by 720p and click OK. So now I'm going to double click in this project file area over here in the open space in order to bring up our uh, import file box. And I'm just going to search MGM footage, which is what I named our footage. And I'll just click OK to this. And now we can take the footage that has been imported and just drag it down into our uh, files onto our timeline. And so you can see that the original file started from way back um, and I kind of zoomed into it. I took this while I was in LA and so we're just going to cut it to right here. You can actually track it from farther back. It might just take a little bit longer. You might have to pick some different points. So I'm just going to uh, trim it for saving your time. It would be the same process as what I'm going to show you. So now you can see that we have a nice, uh, it's a little shaky with the camera. so. Um, Basically what motion tracking does is it allows you to put something into a scene or move something around in a scene as if it was actually there, but it really wasn't. So by taking and putting that extra M on there, we're actually able to move that M around in the scene. Now if we wanted to do this in something like Photoshop, we just copy the M, put it over where it looked good, and we'd be done. But that's for one single image. Now if you have, um, my footage I think is 30 frames per second, which means that there's 30 single images per second. So if you put it on one frame and it looks good, on the next frame it's not going to look good because the camera's shaking around and everything is happening like that. So what motion tracking allows you to do is actually find how the camera is moving and how the objects in your footage are moving and it allows it to adjust the what is going to be in ours, the M, in order to stay with that movement. So um, you can use it to put things onto something or you can use it to uh, make something follow something else. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can use motion tracking. So let's just uh, get started. So I'm going to click um, on our footage and then I'm going to need the tracker window and you can go up to window and then down to tracker or I already have mine over here and I'm just going to scale this up so that I can see everything and basically what we want to do is track the motion so I'm going to click track motion and we want to take and track the position the rotation and the scale now the position is where um, something is basically and so we're also going to need to be tracking the rotation because as the camera moves around the rotation of the M that we're and the, or the letters that we're going to be tracking are going to rotate as my hand rotates and also the scale because as we zoom in then the further we zoom in the further um, the scale gets distorted so we're going to also need to track the scale so basically how the motion tracker works is we're just going to zoom in I'm just using my mouse wheel in order to do that and you see, see that we have these track points right here I'm just going to drag these where you can see them um, and basically what these do um, when you're using more than just position and you get two points basically the inner box you can mess with both of these boxes the inner box is going to allow you to is basically what you want to track so here let me let me give you an example we're gonna be tracking the letters and what you're looking for is something that has a high contrast so the letters against the building have a pretty high contrast sometimes you're looking for just like a little black dot in the middle of something white or you might actually take and put something on your actor or something while you're filming so that you have this contrast later and the outer box basically means as the camera moves around within this box we're looking for what's inside the inner box so um, the inner box is the most refined and then outside of that it's what's looking for the inner box so I'm just going to be doing the M and the other M on this building and we're just going to track that so I can take this just size this out move it over onto the M and you can see that it gives you a nice zoom in so that you can tell exactly what's happening there and then I'm just going to make the outer box a little bit bigger so now once you have this done what you're going to want to do is make sure your um, footage is at the beginning of uh, the it's at zero seconds and then you're going to want to hit uh, play basically what that's going to do is it's going to analyze forward and you can see that these track points are staying right on the M now if your track points are moving around off of the thing that you originally put them in you're going to have a problem and you're going to want to hit stop and you're going to want to move them back onto the subject now you can see that it's staying well on the M um, and so that's good that means that it's tracking it very well so I can actually nah, I can't zoom out right now while it's tracking but you can see it's almost done and so then we'll actually be able to use our tracking data so now that we have our tracking data you can see that 
you have all these little points and it's a weird squiggly line. Basically what each one of these little these little squares are are a keyframe. So you can see that the M moves all over. This little squiggly line is where the M actually moves, this first M, and this uh, other one is for the second M. So what we're going to do is basically take this data and put it into something. So what we're going to be putting it into is a null object. So we're going to go up to Layer, New, and then down to Null Object. And then we can take and edit the target of our track in our tracker window, and then go to Null 3 and make sure that that's set. Now you can see Motion Target Null 3. And if you click Apply, and you will just leave it on X and Y, click OK, and now all of that data is in this red square. So this red square is going to be moving as the building is moving, basically. So the rotation and everything of these letters is how this red square is going to move. So now, um, what we're going to do is actually make the M, and then we'll, I'll show you what we're going to do with the red square. So we've tracked our footage at this point, now we just need to basically make the thing that's going to be put onto the building. Now you can put whatever you want, I just thought it'd be cool to make another letter that's not actually there. So what I'm going to do with this footage is click on the first, um, just where our regular footage is, hit Control D to duplicate the layer, and then what I'm going to do is just come and zoom into that, Make sure you have the right layer selected. And I'm just going to grab my pen tool and mask this out. So basically if you're drawing onto um, a video layer, you're going to be creating a mask. So I'm just going to be able to mask that out. And you can see what this is doing. If I turn off our bottom layer, you can see that that's what we've cut out of the second layer there. So now what I can do is take and zoom out here. And I can move this around so that, make sure that you're on the right layer again. I can move this around so that basically we have a second M right there on the footage and we can zoom in and make sure you can see these lines right here. We want those to line up pretty well and you might rotate it around a little bit, but I think that, that looks pretty good. So you can see that now we've created the second M, but this M is only good for that frame. And one thing I want to mention, um, you can see that I'm at the end of my footage. Now, if I were to do this at the beginning of the footage, then I would be getting a smaller M. And so when it actually scaled it up, when it zoomed in, we would have a problem. So you want to make sure that you're at the end. And I should probably move that back to where I actually created that mask, which was right there. So now what we need to do is basically make one frame of this M because you can see as I moved it around, the mask was moving inside of there. So it was masking a different part and we just want that single M in that shape. So what we're going to do is take and we can zoom in by holding alt and scrolling into our uh, timeline and we're just going to take and hit alt and then left bracket and again make sure you're on the right layer hold alt left bracket and then hold alt we can take and move it and hold alt right bracket and it should take and trim it to one frame so you can see now we have one frame of m so what we need to do is basically extend this, and I've seen people do it different ways. They've tried to save out frames or do it in Photoshop and bring it in. Um, that's complicated. What I like to do, right click on it, go up to time, and then go down to time freeze, or we're going to, sorry, freeze frame. All right, and so what that's gonna do is it's gonna put a square frame on there, and now we can just take and, you know, drag this however we want. I'm gonna zoom back out by holding alt and scrolling with my mouse wheel. Basically, we can move this out however we want. You can go all the way on here. So you can see that our M is now taking and moving around. Um, it's not moving with the building, obviously, because we haven't actually put the tracker on it, but it is staying right um, in the same shape. It's not actually moving the mask around within that clip, so that's good. So if we move it out to here, it'll look right on the building because that's where we positioned it to. But what we actually need to do is take and put it onto this square in order for it to look wet, like right in the scene. So what I'm going to do in order to do that is something called parenting. Now, if you parent something to something else, it's going to move in the exact same way as that. And if you remember right, our little red square here, if you can't see that on YouTube, you might be able to see it there. Our little red square is moving exactly how the building and these letters are moving. So what we need to do is take our M and we're going to parent it to null three. And now if we take and scroll through, you can see that it moves around pretty close to the building. Now we seem to have a little bit of an issue here. Um, obviously the M is kind of in space up here. Now the tracking won't always be perfect. You might have an issue with it. So what we need to do is basically take and open this up, open up our null tracking data. And you can see if we zoom in here, I'm just going to hold alt and scroll in. And what we're going to do is just, I don't know, grab a whole bunch of points here and we can take and just move those down. Just arrow key that down until it looks like it's in the right position. 
you can see now we have it where it's in the right position. The color's a little bit off just because the footage changed when I zoomed in. But you can see that um, if we move the arrows down, we're getting a pretty good effect. So if we scroll forward, you can see that it, it'll jump here. And if we take and zoom out a little bit, we can find where it stops jumping. And you might have to do this a little bit manually. Most of it just needs to be moved down a little bit. We got pretty lucky with our track. So basically, I'm just going to take and grab a bunch of these points and just take an arrow that down. So we're te technically moving the red square, which is the null object. Um, but you can see now that it moves pretty close to the building. We might need to take and as you move it along here, just nudge it a little bit. Now you you can get the idea um, of how you got it just right. It took me probably about 10 minutes or so just of nudging a couple of keyframes here and there. You can see we've got a pretty good track going on there. And this is at 200%, so that's why it looks a little blurry. Um, as we move it out here, you can see that it jumps up again. And you can basically just take and grab groups of keyframes and move it around until you get it just where you need it. And then right here, we'll grab it and move it down. And I spent probably about 10 minutes or so just working on that. Now, um, depending on how complex your track is, you can see it moves right there. So we'll just grab some keyframes right in there. You might have to grab single keyframes if there's one problematic section. Um, but you can see that if we zoom out here, um, just make sure that you're not spending a super amount of time. Just make sure it looks good, but don't make sure that each and every keyframe, see we have a little discrepancy there. Each and every keyframe is perfect because people are watching it at 30 frames a second. There's a reason video is shot in 30 frames in one second, and it's because people's eyes can't keep up. So you can see that our M kind of vibrates a little bit there, and we'll just take and grab right there. Make sure we move this down. And so you can see that you get the idea. Just in a little bit of time, I fixed most of that area. So I mean, it might move a little bit, and you can fix that and go back and fine tune it. But you can see that we have a pretty good track, at least for this whole first section. What messes it up is when you zoom. So if you can prevent zooming or prevent camera shake, then you'll have a much better time tracking that. But you can see that we have a pretty good track for at least the first part there. So you can go in and fix this later. I'm not going to waste your time sitting here fixing keyframes for the tutorial when you obviously get the idea. You grab some keyframes and move them around until they look right, and then you're okay and good to go. So I hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Um, this is a pretty versatile tool. Um, this is the point tracker in After Effects. You can actually use other third-party trackers. Um, I know Mocha actually works with After Effects, which does like planar stuff where you can actually like track a plane on something and then use that data. Um, Buju works for 3D motion tracking, and there's other 3D motion tracking um, programs that you can use so there's a lot of options out there but this point tracker don't underestimate the power of that because you can get some pretty good results with this and don't forget about the um, fact that you can track things that are moving such as say you had a um, gun in an alien movie and you wanted to track a little LED screen that showed ammo or something on that. Now, of course the gun's going to be moving around but you want the LED or LCD screen to be moving with the gun because it's part of the gun. So what you do is track the gun and then just parent the LED LCD screen onto the gun and you'd be good to go. So for instance, if I wanted to take this plane back here, you can see it flying in the background, possibly on YouTube, you can see it there. Um, if you're watching in HD, you will. And you could actually track some, I don't know, maybe like one of those little things like you see when you're near the beach where they have the, uh, the little banners behind them. You could track a banner to that so it would actually move behind the building with the banner on it if you kind of rotoscoped out the building. So it's a very powerful tool. So I hope you guys learned something. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment, and check back next week for a new video tutorial. Thanks for watching.